Hello, thank you for joining me today for Give Him 15. The title of our post today from the brand new devotional, Give Him 15 and Appeal to Heaven. 30 devotionals that we've shared in the past on Give Him 15, which we think will bless you. And by the way, volume three, you can find it at DutchSheets.org. You can also get the Kindle version, by the way, for those of you that are interested in that. The title of today's post is A People in Covenant with God. Why do we declare and decree? According to Psalm 110, verses 1 to 3, Christ has given the ecclesia his scepter of authority. Isaiah 22, 22 references this authority as a key, as does Matthew 16, 19. One of the ways we release this authority is through verbal commands. As we do so, Psalm 110 says, we are making Christ's enemies his footstool. The passage states that we do this as part of Christ's Melchizedek king priest order. Melchizedek order, which is his kingly priestly order, of which all believers, by the way, are members. As kings, we decree. As priests, we petition and appeal. When we decree God's plans for America, we are releasing his purposes and cutting off Satan's plans. We are wielding the sword of the Spirit. We are also participating in the synergy of the ages tapping into history past, and writing history future. Here are some great quotes from America's history, which you can use, and you may not have seen. And Then we are going to decree from these posts. Peter Bulkley, probably not heard of him. He was a Puritan leader who established the city of Concord, Massachusetts. In his only publication, entitled The Gospel Covenant, also known as The Covenant of Grace, opened, Peter Bulkley stated, We are as a city set upon a hill in the open view of all the earth. We profess ourselves to be a people in covenant with God. and Therefore, the Lord our God will cry shame upon us if we walk contrary to the covenant which we have promised to walk in. Using Deuteronomy 28.10 and Isaiah 61.9 as his sources, Bulkley continued, let us study, remember this is founder of Concord, Massachusetts, let us study so to walk that this may be our excellency and dignity among the nations of the world among which we live, that they may be constrained to say of us, only this people is wise and holy and blessed people that all that see us may see and know that the name of the Lord is called upon by us and that we are the seed which the Lord has blessed. Laws created in America based on the word of God. America's original laws and constitutions were based on the scriptures. Yeah, the revisionists don't like this, but it's true. Here are a few examples. The Massachusetts General Court, 1636, resolved to establish a code of laws that would be agreeable, quote, agreeable to the Word of God. The, the Connecticut General Court, 1639, established under the Constitution of Connecticut, issued the order, quote, that God's Word should be the only rule for ordering the affairs of government in this commonwealth, end quote. The Fundamental Orders, or Constitution of Connecticut, January 14th, 1639, was the first constitution written in America and established a pattern that all others followed, including the United States Constitution. So important was this work that Connecticut became known as the Constitution State. 
The committee responsible to frame the orders was charged to make the laws, quote, as near the law of God as they can be, end quote. Incredible. Cotton Mather, an American colonial clergyman and educator, graduated from Harvard, 1678, and joined his father, Increase Mather, in the pastor of the Second Church of Boston in 1680. He helped found Yale University and in 1721 became president of Connecticut College. He authored 450 books and was the first person in America to be elected to the Royal Society of London. Cotton Mather was regarded as the most brilliant man of New England in his time. Among his many accomplishments was the inter introduction of the smallpox inoculation during the epidemic in 1721. In 1702, Cotton published Magnalia Christi Americana. That's Latin, I guess. <laughs> it, it means the great achievement of Christ in America. The great achievement of Christ in America which is the most detailed history written of the first 50 years of New England. And in it, he stated, quote, The sum of the matter is that from the beginning of the Ref Reformation in the English nation, there had always been a generation of godly men desirous to pursue the reformation of religion according to the word of God. The Puritans were driven to seek a place for the exercise of the Protestant religion, according to the light of conscience in the deserts of America. And another, Jonathan Trumbull. You may not have heard of him. Just one year and a couple of months before the signing of the Declaration of Independence, April 19th, 1775, in a proclamation of a day of fasting and prayer for the Connecticut colony, Governor Jonathan Trumbull beseeched that, and I'm going to quote, and this is incredible, quote, he asked that God would graciously pour out his spirit. This is a governor now, pro, pro, a proclamation asking that God would graciously pour out his spirit on us to bring us to a thorough repentance and effectual reformation, that our iniquities may not be our ruin, that he would restore, preserve, and secure the liberties of this and all the other British American colonies and make the land a mountain of holiness and habitation of righteousness forever. End quote. And we may as well end with the Declaration of Independence. The very last line leaves no doubt as to where our founding fathers placed their faith and gained their resolve. Quote, and for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Well, let's use these and pray and release declarations and agree, producing the synergy of the ages and the will of God in our land. Father, as we declare from America's past, we do so to see her restored and realigned with your divine purposes. As a great symphony of declarations and appeals rise to you, merge them with the early voices that declared your plans and purposes. Use the decrees to shake down evil and reestablish righteousness in our land. From their statements and from these quotes, we declare America to be a people in covenant with God. We declare that America is a city on a hill 
and the light of truth will once again shine from our shores in order that all who see us may see and know that the name of the Lord is called upon by us, and we are the seed which the Lord hath blessed. We declare that God will graciously pour out His Holy Spirit on America again to bring us to a thorough repentance and effectual, reforma uh, effectual reformation in order that our iniquities may not be our ruin, that He will restore, preserve, and secure the liberties of this nation and make the land a mountain of holiness and habitation of righteousness forever. Now, Lord, we ask you to strengthen, bless, and lead intercessors throughout America. Remind us of our authority in Christ, the power of our words, and how incredibly noble is this cause. Remind us of the millions of souls coming into your kingdom because of our prayers. We pray these things in Christ's name. And our formal decree today, we decree that Christ's enemies are becoming his footstool. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining me as we read a few posts from this devotional, Volume 3. Check it out. Give him uh, 15 at Appeal to Heaven. You can do so at DutchSheets.org. Thanks again for joining me today. Please join me tomorrow.